Credelio Cat protects your cat from ticks and fleas, so you can be close. Credelio Close. Because you would do anything for your cat to stay Credelio Close. Try Credelio Cat to protect against ticks and fleas. The first and only chewable for cats. It's small and tasty, so it's easy to give. This drug class has been associated with neurologic adverse reactions. Use with caution in cats with a history of seizures. Keep your pets close. Credelio Close. Spectrum One brings you seamless connection. Get Spectrum One. You won't be stressing with the harasses down low speeds. Advanced Wi Fi security. Free nationwide 5G. Come get just what you need with Spectrum One. Hey, the song ain't done. Let me tell you a little bit about Spectrum One. No diggity, doubt the best deal in town. $49.99, how that sound? Hey, Spectrum One. Switch now to Spectrum One.
I was stressing and running home for nothing. What's that say there? Ready, Freddy? Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this, to be honest with you. Oh, fuck. You're fine. Oh, shit. Did he get engaged so I was supposed to connect to him? All right. Or did you already leave me? Sure did. Okay. Nope, nope, you're there. All right. So let's start out with uh, with some uh, predictions here. Who do you think is going to win this game today? Uh, honestly, I've been on CMU this whole time. I think CMU's got a great opportunity to win this game today um just based off of last time uh you know when we're sitting here thinking just based off of last time we got the back corner of the end zone touchdown to win the game from ccu so i don't think that's going to happen again i think cmu actually gets the win this time okay okay that's a bold prediction bold prediction um, I'm gonna swing the opposite of you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I think the CCU is gonna pull it off again. Um, you know, they they're not the top team in the country for no reason. Um, so let's get to it. Who do you uh, who do you want to go to first for these interviews? Um, let's go to CMU real quick. All right. Yeah, house is kind of different. So, oh, hi, sneak. Hello. On you, cool. All right, Gerald. Yes. Quad. Core. What's up? Big game today. How y'all feeling? We're the well, um, just glad to be here. Yeah, I mean, re in reality, yeah, we got lucky last week. You know, did not play well at all. Um, through three quarters, we played like we shouldn't have been in the playoffs. Uh, and then the fourth quarter, we finally put it together. So. We can't do that again. We've had, it's got to be a perfect day for on both sides to have a shot to win this. Gotcha. Uh, 
So I know that what happened last time was obviously devastating for you guys. Um, what can you do to stop that coastal offense from tearing your defense apart again? Uh, stop the running game. That's like that's almost the entire offense. I feel like so. Like if we stop that, I trust our secondary to lock them down in man coverage. Okay. Oh, I just wanna I just wanna start by saying congratulations to everyone. Um, it's amazing to get here. It's our first season. Uh, Fred Weasley went off all season. Y'all find yourself in the national championship game. Uh, I don't know if he asked this already. We feeling confident. How are we feeling? What are we looking like on the field? The team, any nerves? I mean, it's a natty. I feel like there's some nervous, you know, for everyone. But, no, we feel pretty confident. I know we lost to them last time we played. But, uh, you know, got stopped short of the two-yard line. So, it's not like, you know, you're out of the game. It was down mm -hmm. to the wire. I feel like we could very easily to win this. Eager to prove what we can do, because th even that game being that close, it, it felt like a bit of a sloppy game. Still, yeah. we can if we can put together a perfect game, you know, got a lot to prove still. All right, man, that's it for me. I'll let you guys go, and we'll go over to the other team. All right, yeah, good right. luck, guys. Thank you. We got 25 seconds on the play clock you know right. what i mean yep. and we can always audible to a different formation we could even do that i could just audible to a different formation right. and we go from there good gauge yeah good twist. what's going on i just right. want to first start out by saying congratulations to both coaches on getting here on your first year in the rfcl um i know patrick jordan and jordan grant have been fantastic for you guys in the backfield so just uh congratulations to your team were there any nerves out there on practice beforehand how we feeling it how's the warm-up pretty good i mean honestly the the pressure is on me and twist and how well we can communicate this where we're without howl unfortunately so we're gonna have to be you know one of us is basically i'm basically gonna have to be defense coordinator while he uh retains his role as oc to not um so i'm working a little double duty we're both very offensive minded we see the game the same way offensively um so hopefully that'll translate to the defense as well okay uh gage since you are acting as the defensive coordinator for today uh how what like what is what is the game plan going in to stop Fred Weasley? And, um, honestly, we're going to have to see how he's playing. Um, Fred's been very inconsistent all year. Sometimes he likes to run a little bit more. Sometimes he can throw the ball over the field. If he's a, if he's going to be throwing a lot and throwing accurate, then we want to try to make him beat us with his legs. If he's going to scramble a lot, then then uh, we'll try to make him beat, beat us with his arm. Ultimately, we're just going to play opposite of him. Right. West, uh, it's been a long season for you, right? You started out as a head coach, then life got in your way, and you ended up as the OC here for a uh, playing in the national championship game. How does it feel, just your journey throughout the season, to get to this national championship game and have a chance to win? Yeah, and talk about a backstory, man. I mean, leaving my uh, my family back in Michigan, my son playing back there still. So it has been kind of a different uh, different season for our family, but. Um, blessed to be here, blessed to be hired by Coach Gage here to run the offense, and it's been working really well. So, uh, you know, like he said, we had a great week of practice. We talked about a lot of stuff. Our our, uh, our minds really click, and we, we came up with a pretty good game plan. So um, I'm excited about this chance, and we'll see if we can get a ring. All right. That's all I got. Sneak? Nope, that's all I got. Uh, good luck, guys. We'll hey, Steve, can you, move the, uh, can you move the cameras up closer to the corner on both scenes? Make sure you get this T-shirt in there, too, boys. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is he still in here? I can't look. He's still in here. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. You go. Know I'm saying, sneak like more out of a, the middle and closer to the top, yeah. like top right, and top left. Yep. Cool. My parsec uh, dropped, so I'm just gonna have sneak share screen if that's not too much. Oh, you are asking a lot, my friend. Yeah, because my parsec dropped off the gate. <laughs> you are asking a lot, my friend. We can add it back real quick. Yeah, I, I just connect. I just connect. So, twist back up a little bit. 
Yeah, that's perfect. There we go. All right. Anyway, good luck. We will talk to you at the uh, at the half. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. So, no. I before hear anybody before more anybody says anything right before, before anybody says anything, I just want to let you guys know, I just moved. And I only have one monitor, so I'm making things work here. Okay? So, bear with me. Anyway, as you were saying, Horace, sorry. What is... I hear every... I hear, like, an echo right now. I don't think YouTube does. I think it's just me. I, I think it's just me because... I don't know what's happening. I just looked back up for a sec, and I hear us... I just hear my start, you, start this you, conversation. You need to... So, basically what's happening is you're hearing the sound coming from Gage's PC as well. Um, so all you gotta do is just mute like the sound that. on the Parsec and you're good to go. How do I mute the sound on the Parsec? Uh, click on the Parsec symbol and then go to sound where it says on and just click it. And we have kickoff. <laughs> Looks like... National Championship is kicked off! Let's go! Looks like CMU is getting the ball first. I might have to mute here in a second. That's all right. I got this. As we're going to see the changes happen for each team. Um, and now, first on offense in this national championship of RFCL season hey. one is CMU in all whites. Oh, wow. I like those helmets. Those have to be brand new for today's game. Fake jet sweep hand up off the middle on an inside zone that gets negative two yards. Or never mind. He gets back to the line. I don't believe that's true. Uh, got home just in time to get on and get the stream set up. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. I don't hear myself talking to my own ears. Another shotgun single back formation. Two wide receivers to the left side, I believe. Oh, it's going to be a read option by Fred Weasley. Uh, is that Fred Weasley? Just a uh, just straight up question, real quick. Um, and I had to mute because the fucking dogs. Are those sleeves Fred has on? <laughs> okay. Okay. We're sitting here. We're going to go hurry up formation. Fred Weasley single back. He's going to drop back to pass, throw it over the middle on an inside route by Colt Strong for nine yards. What happened to Fred? It's going to bother me. Uh, Fred Weasley tanned. Let's just say that Fred Weasley tanned on his way to the national championship game. Same formation, sitting back here, single back. I believe that that is an actual arm sleeve on the left on the left arm, so I don't think. What about the right arm? The right <laughs> arm, I think that he just he was obviously you know took a, took a brief vacation before championship time. Um, you know, got some sun. Third and one, nine. You know, you Central got, you got to relax. You got to relax the nerves before you go into a natty. You know, and we're in the bus. He had the window down. He was sitting on the right side, had his arm out the window. That's all it is. It's a single arm tan. That's all it is. Hey, I understand <laughs> that one. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, we're seeing a great first drive out of Fred Weasley. He's really playing well. He's running. Like um, like Gage said, they want to make him beat him with their legs if he's going to throw a lot. There's only been one complete pass. The rest of him runs on this drive. We're going to get a motion man inside zone up the middle. That is a big carry for 13 yards by Jordan Tompkins. But see, that's that's one thing where I would I would kind of disagree with the uh, with Gage on that. You know, because if you're if if you're trying to force him to run, Central Michigan has been turning. You know, they they've been kind of transforming their 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 game plan a little bit. They've been running the ball extremely well as of late. So, I mean, that's that's nothing to tread lightly on. Tyler Carter coming in motion. Going to go on a little inside route there, but it's a wheel route to the running back. Is this the third string? No, this is Caleb Holloman. So we've already seen three running backs hold the ball this game for CMU. And I got to tell you, I think they like that single-man high press man coverage. Oh, absolutely. Um, I just got to throw this out here that – I know you probably said something about it earlier, but those all-white unis, those look pretty freaking icy. Yeah, to bust them out on the last game of CMU history? Like, like what? Right? 
Like, Save Cold Strong was good down this. Cold Strong. Are we going to get a uh, single back formation again with Slesker in the backfield? Fred Weasley bringing Will Davis in motion. It's going to be a play. Ooh, four yards. That looked like two yards. I don't know about you, but I don't believe. Yeah, I don't know about four yards. But, you know, refs are going to call it where they call it. We're getting a lot of single high man, single high press man coverage out here on CCU. And I, I understand they have fantastic corners. But these wide receivers from CMU have lit this season, have lit everyone up this season. Fred Weasley back to pass. Little drop back. He's going to throw to the wheel route again. And that's going to be Seleska for eight yards. I got to say, Fred. you know, with, with CMU's backfield, they are they are not even just a dual threat. They are they are a triple threat, honestly. Uh, even that third string running back is is terrifying when it comes up to the line. Correct, and I don't know if anyone could tell right there, but George, I mean Fred, definitely would have scored there if you cut that in a bit. And you can see sixty six, that big offensive lineman, that pulling guard, start like jumping up and down in the end zone, knowing he just had a touchdown if Fred followed his blocks. That pulling guard. Blocked no one because no one was there. Fred would have walked it in. Instead, it's second and goal. Single. We're getting uh, four receivers out. So Colt Strong on the outside and Tyler Carter at the bottom of your screen. Both of their recruit great wide receivers for this season. Play action pass over the middle to Elijah Guy, someone who doesn't get his name called a lot throughout the season for the first touchdown of the Natty. And Fred Weasley's four for four, 60 yards and a touchdown in one drive. And that's that's a good statement to make for CMU right now. You know, you get the ball first. You prove to the Coastal Carolina that you're not screwing around with moving the ball down the field. And then you put up the first touchdown of the of the national championship. That really sets the tone, and I'm excited to see what Coastal can respond back with. You know, we've seen all season quarterbacks having a real hard time heating up. Uh, it just seems like Frank comes on to the field hot. Like, four for four, six yards and a touchdown. That man came on the field throwing. And both these quarterbacks do it. We've seen Jordan Grant do it last week in the semis. He just came out and instantly started throwing the ball and getting completions. And see that that and that kind of makes it kind of makes you think, you know, maybe I should not take these quarterbacks for granted if I'm Coastal or CMU, because there's other oh. people in this league where they don't have that luxury of you know, having quarterbacks that start automatically hot. The pressure from CMU is there. Coach Core is here. He's not watching an LSU baseball game. So he's actually here today. The pressure from his defense got the Jordan Grant within a second. Hit that man ball incomplete. Snake, you good? Yeah, and just had to yell at the animal. <laughs> what do you need to do? Some more single high press man coverage. This time out of CMU. They're sending that corner on a blitz. It's not going to get there, but that's going to be a drop pass. Oh, for two from Jordan Grant. One drop pass and one where he just got laid up by the defense. And they're coming out and throwing again, Sneak. Like, this is two throws in a row. They haven't ran the ball to Patrick Jordan once. And see, this is very surprising to me, honestly, because I definitely would not have even thought that this could be the final offensive play of this drive of this first oh. drive like the oh. yeah you know, i definitely was not expecting if you know obviously if they throw an incompletion that it was going to be a three and out i've got to be honest here i'm a madman this would 100 percent be a uh read option for me but it's not showing grant backs back fast he's gonna throw deep he's gonna throw long but he's not hot and way overthrows his open receiver who got behind the safety who looked like he was still backpedaling 40 yards downfield no idea why that happened no idea why that safety how that wasn't completed but that's 0 for 3 for jordan grant after just seeing fred weasley go for, for four yeah that was uh surprising for a first drive for Coastal, especially with how dominant they have been. Um, now, I guess let's see if the Coastal defense can actually stop the the offense for Central Michigan and Fred Weasley, because if uh, if they can't, 
I feel like they're going to just keep digging themselves a hole that they probably won't be able to climb out of if Coastal's offense keeps keep, keeps on playing like this anyway. Fred, back to pass. It is a play-action pass. Wide open, Colt Strong left his corner in the dust. That almost looked like cover, uh, cover two zone. I'm not entirely sure because the slot the slot corner actually backed up and followed his man. Um, but that did look like cover zone because of how easy Colt Strong just beat his guy off the line. And that's your, that's your recruit, isn't it? It is, in fact, and he's quicker than I am in real life. So you know what? They did me well. <laughs> Um, anyways, we're seeing no press man this go around, obviously, after just being burnt. Fred Weasley back to pass, no time in the pocket, gets it away to Elijah Guy, who will go down for minus one, that's second and 11. Way to get that ball into your hands. I look at that pressure on Fred Weasley, somehow gets the ball out to the tight end. You know Wad wanted that halfback wheel. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's been working. It's been working great for them so far in this game. Now we have a two-man backfield, two running back backfield back there. We'll see if this is a run they'd like to run a lot of motion from one running back and then a read option just to kind of mess with the defense a little bit, which does work. But they're going to go ahead and audible out. The running back is in at tight end. I repeat, this is a Mason offense. The running back is in at tight end, and that was almost oh. picked in the biggest. Game of the year, Law Brickhands. Can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> oh, that's got to be unfortunate for that young kid, you know. Biggest game of the year. You're a freshman. You get your ball, like you get, you get your hand on the ball in this big game, and you drop it. That's just, that's got to be demoralizing a little bit. Perfectly thrown to him. Tyler Carter. Um, is that his name? Tyler Carter. <laughs> Carter these yep. single man on the left-hand side. Colt Strong coming in motion. It's going to be a pass. Colt Strong is about to go on an in here. He's not going to look. And the in by Tyler Carter wide open for 13 yards and a first down. After a really bad couple plays, first down. And I got to say, you know, it seems like Tyler Carter has been very silent for Central Michigan as of late. So it's nice to you know, see his number called in this big game. Yeah, Tyler's playoffs haven't been the best. He was one of the best receivers in regular season, but his playoffs haven't been the best. Colt has come through, and so has Willie Davis. It's going to be another play-action pass. This is the, probably the exact same pass they've been running all day. It's only a, oh, my God, oh, God. Oh, no. It's dropped again. Gray drops it. That wow. should have been a pick. That is back. If they score on this drive, Gage has got to light a fire into his defense because that is two picks that could have went the other way. Yeah, something's got to change on that. Celeste yeah, alone in the backfield. Colt Strong in the bottom right. Sorry. I just, no, I you're, thought good. You were done. you're good. <laughs> but that is back to back drop picks. First one could have been a pick six. That one would have ended the drive. Yeah. That's and, what I get for trying to multitask. <laughs> and up, up the middle. So let's get for 12 yards. That is what you get for trying to ball the pass. I'll cut you off every time. So let's get for 12 yards. The middle of the field's wide open for the running back. Not once has the middle um, gotten pressure to Fred and or the running back. And that center and guards are moving it. The one almost sat came off the left end from the left tackle. Motion man. Play action, looking for it, looking for it all. He's going to throw a little wheel route to number two. I believe that's Willie Davis, six-yard reception. And that could be counted as a bounce route. Could be. See, I tried running those. My guys just run straight out of bounds. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, then, if you, then if your quarterback does decide to throw it to them, then it's a penalty on you. So yeah. Correct. It's still the first quarter, you know. I wonder if they're going to try to get this ball out before the first quarter. Yeah, hike the ball one more time. Get another play. Again. Do it. Nope. They're gonna. They're happy to go into the second quarter, and here we go. Seven nothing. Honestly, I thought this would be seven seven going into the second quarter. We see offenses start slow, but these two start really fast. So I thought this would be seven seven. Worst case scenario here, it's fourteen nothing. But CCU can definitely come back from that. Oh, absolutely, but they got to get Jordan Grant or use uh, Patrick Jordan. 
get him. Holloman. No, I, I completely agree. Holloman up the middle for a gain of about four. We're sitting here at three and one. Again, the middle's wide open. Um, and like I said earlier, C C CMU likes to send one man on motion every single time. He's got a few people open. It's Colt Strong for a touchdown. Colt yeah. Strong, my recruit, five yard touchdown, fourteen nothing. I just want to say a surprise, man. It is. I just want to say, uh, I think Colt was one of the league leaders in touchdowns through the season. So my guy is good, uh, yeah, he's and I think he's, he was. He's a possession receiver, too. He's not even speaking. So. But anyways, 14 nothing in the natty. I wonder if the Nerves are getting to CCU now. I mean, they got to be. You know, it's... Yeah, it's only the beginning of the second quarter, but you're already down 14 nothing and have not done anything on offense yet. Oh, and obviously my your defense. God. And obviously your defense cannot stop Central Michigan, so you have to score in each of these runs. I know exactly what this play call is going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to Tony Romo this thing. Mm -hmm. It is that halfback direct snap. I guarantee you it's the halfback direct snap to Patrick Jordan. I do this on my team. I call a play, and it's it's right 70% of the time, and I'm wrong. But it's still a run to the outside. What a broken tackle. Oh Another going to miss. A gain of 12 from Patrick Jordan. Whoa, that should have been a negative four-yard play. What a stiff arm from Patrick Jordan. Like, that, is, that is like pure Todd, like prime Todd Gurley, Derrick Henry. Like, kid is just showing out and showing off that strength. Running to the outside in this league is a death sentence. Um, but somehow right there, Patrick Jordan gets through, breaks the tackle. Another guy misses. Whoever unless, not, number nine is needs yeah, to get new unless, glasses. Unless it's Patrick Jordan or Zach Armstrong. Correct. And we're going to see a play action pass over the middle to number 10 for Julius Tid for an eight-yard reception. My bad for not knowing all the names of the CCU wide receivers. I don't have a paper in front of me telling me who's who. I'll get it when the game tells me. How about that? <laughs> we're going to see a motion here. He's one for four, eight yards. I think we're going to see a motion run here. We saw a bunch on that playbook. Um, so we're sitting here. I think we're going to see a motion run play. It's a play action pass, so I'm very wrong. Over the middle to no one. Uh, definitely should have played. Should have ran that ball, in my opinion. Yeah, especially with being such short yardage and then having the pass go to the Gophers. You know, it's not... Dude, I love how I said I'm right 70% of the time, and I've been right 0% of the time today. <laughs> but I sit back there, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is this, this is this. And Raider just listens, and we call a play based on it, and I'm usually right, and I'm happy with it. We're seeing a pistol formation, two running backs, Patrick Jordan in the backfield, two receivers at the top, and Trey Turner, I believe, the baseball star, is at tight end. Back to pass once again. He's one for four, ladies and gentlemen. Throws it to Patrick Jordan. Patrick Jordan can't do everything, though, and it's fourth and one. I think you left your uh, Tony Romo play calling skills at home. Right. I'm, it's no longer my season. I've been out a few weeks, you know. Who cares, right? I'll, I'll get up next been week. Out of, been out of the game for a little bit. Out but, of the you game know, for I, a little bit. I do got to say something. You know, it's, it's it's actually a big honor to be calling this game with you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do appreciate that. It's it's so good to be here with you, I'm not going to lie, and be able to cast the national championship game for the first ever time in this league. Back to pass. It's a massive blitz. He's wide open over the middle. Number 15, Clarence Jefferson, the guy who, who I would say this a lot today, the guy who caught the ball in the corner in the end zone to win this game just a few weeks ago comes up with a big catch right there, and Jordan Grant in the face of pressure gets the ball out. Yeah, and... Coastal's, Coastal's kind of lucky that Jordan was able to get that ball off and throw it on target because, you know, with how he's been throwing today, I, me personally, I would not have trusted it. Pistol formation, the run. They're going to run commit, and somehow he's breaking tackles. Can he break this one? Patrick Jordan cannot break that one. It's three yards. But if he did, uh, it would have been a bad day considering the rest of the defense just kind of ran behind him and watched. But like you said earlier, Sneak, I'm glad to be here with you, man. This is amazing. This is my second national championship in just a few weeks, so I'm feeling good. Inside zone up the middle, a gain of eight from Patrick Jordan. Let this man cook. Let this man eat. 
Did you cash for the Gridiron National Championship? Yeah, it was me and Larry. Oh, okay. Okay. I got a shout out from Board. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey, hand off to Patrick Jordan up the middle, two yards. Nah, that sounded weird. I'm not one of those guys. Boyd's cool, but I've seen one video. I'm not like one of those fan boys. <laughs> He's just a cool dude. Uh, I got to mute up. You got this name? Well, that's terrible. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see if Coastal can actually score on this drive. If they can score on this drive, I think they'll be okay in this game. But with throws like that from Jordan Grant, you're not going to be able to do it. Sorry about that. We got a third and eight. And I'm Well, ladies and I gentlemen, be... I dropped my glasses and I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I might be calling the obvious here, but it's gonna be a pass. It's gonna be a pass. Clarence Jefferson should be wide open off the press man. Instead, that slot corner does follow him as well. So that was two man. Trey Turner in the corner for 17 yards. Did you see that? That was an interesting defense. Clarence Jefferson broke off the line against his press corner, and then the slot corner went with him. It was almost like they doubled him, so they had to have pressed his button. They had to say, hey, this is who the ball is going to. I'm surprised I'm surprised that Jordan Grant was able to get that ball off because he had okay. a lineman in his face. Very. Another press man single high opportunity here. Man in motion. Not gonna hand, it's going to hand off, off the middle to Patrick Jordan, negative two yards. They are playing the run. This defensive line has been talking all week about Patrick Jordan not getting anywhere on them, and it hasn't really worked, but look at them. They're playing the run. Um, and I got to say, um, I think this is forcing CCU to be one-dimensional, and you don't want to be, right? right. Like, you want to be able to run the ball, and Patrick Jordan's doing a great job, but he also has to break a lot of tackles and able to do it. Which he's... You know, kind of done already, but, you know, going the whole entire game with doing that, it puts a lot of stress on you. Correct. And we're sitting here in a third and six. This is big. You need to walk away with seven. Walking away with three is not good enough because then you're still down two scores. You have to walk away with seven here. Especially with the clock narrowing down on halftime and, CC, and CMU getting the ball back. With that amount of time left, it, it's, you know, Man, I'd run this ball again, to be honest with you. It's a three-man front. They're going to pass. It's going to be kind of a, sort of a play action. It's going to go over the middle. I believe this is Clarence Jefferson. On the same exact route, he runs a lot for four yards. I would go for this. Do they go for this? I got to say, Gage I is... I don't know, though. Because, I mean, you can't run it because they're going to run commit. You can't throw it because Jordan Grant is still cold. And he can throw it off the wire. And then you turn the ball over and... Now CMU has the ball, and you have no point. Either way, either way, you look here. If you kick a field goal, if you kick a field goal, it's 14-3. Technically, you're still down two scores. Because then you'll have to score yes, and get another but, field goal to top of the game. But that only limits CMU to march downfield with, what, a minute 40, roughly? And then CCU gets the ball back at half. Yeah. I got to say, I'm going for this every day. Every day that starts with why, I'm going for this. I, I've proved that in my playoff game. It didn't work for me, but I'm going. It just, if you're still down two scorers after you kick a field goal and you can still get down three scorers, I don't think it's worth it. You, and it's fourth and two. I, I'm going for this every day that starts with why. Is it what they're going to do? It's going to be a bunch formation. Look how tall Clarence Jefferson is. Oh, wide open on the out route. He doesn't take it. He's going to run to the right, and it's going to be a turnover. Jordan Grant sacked. They should have listened to you, Sneak. Was that the caster's curse right there? Did I just broadcast his curse? It might have been, Pars. It might have been. He was wide open, man. Wide open on the out route. And you know what? I've seen a lot of out routes in my day not get completed. So, all right. See, back on offense. They really got to stop him here, man. Really, they haven't been able to stop this team once, but they need to get a stop here. Oh, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be Fred Weasley. That should be a negative yard. It's not. 
it's a God, zero yard. Back to the line, man. Oof. They're so good at getting back to the line. Every single time I think it's a negative yardage play. No, they're back at the line. Right. Oh, no, man. And, and you can see, like, looking down on the field, I'm watching the replay on the uh, Jumbotron, you can see the disgust in Coach Gage's face when they don't get that. And you can see Coach Twist, the offensive coordinator, his head is, is in his hands on the Jumbotron. Hard yeah. to see. They really need to stop. That first play was really good. Going to be dropped back to pass. It's a three-man rush. Can they get there? They get there and get the sack. Fred Weasley behind the yard for three. That number 90. Has a lot of sacks on this season. He tied the record for most sacks in a single game, and he has kept going. If CCU can stop CMU right now, I think they might have a chance to still score. Yeah, the short field is smarter. They gotta play smarter. Slasker, <laughs> so the single man in the backfield, Tyler Carter, by himself down on the left. You could possibly look for him on a corner. There's plenty of grass out there for him to get a corner route that safety's on the inside and that he has two corners up there but one of them's probably going to blitz or one of them's going to follow the running back so you probably get tyler carter on this corner route pulls from comes in motion he's going to run over the middle it's going to be three it's oh my up. god it's intercepted it's intercepted by gray the guy who dropped it in the end zone last drive the guy <laughs> he who redeemed himself he redeemed himself man like that's not a that's not a recruiting thing, but good for him because that redeemed himself. That made him look good in his teammates' eyes, and now they have an opportunity to strike. And see now you and you have a quite a bit of time, and you're in good field position. So I would not waste this, even if it is just the three points. Take the points and go into the half, and you get the ball back, and then you can start marching downfield again and try and put up. Some oh ball. God! But that and was all, all out. Out. That was, sent everyone on the defense. There was nothing Jordan Grant could have done on that one. Coach Cord, defensive coordinator, was trusting his corners because if Grant saw that and just threw it deep, it would have been one on one anywhere on the field. All right, nobody in the backfield to help Jordan Grant. They've been sending pressure all day. Will the offensive line be able to stop it? Five wide receivers out there on the field. That guy in the middle is massive, by the way. I have no idea who that is. He's dropping back the pass, looking to the right, going up, throwing left to the guy I said was massive and missed. How do you um? How do you miss a guy who's six foot nine? It's like how do you miss that with like an eight foot wingspan? Yeah, I, I mean look at I don't know number eight right there. With Jordan Grant. To be honest with you, like this is not the style of play that I I see out of him. Um, yeah, Jordan Grant's having jitters, man. It's his final college game ever. Can we talk about that real quick? This is his legacy. This is his final college game ever. Bunch formation. We were getting both the tall guys on the right side and Julius hit on the left. Drop back. Throw to nobody. And I am losing my mind on that sideline right now. And I think, yeah, I honestly think that that all-out blitz kind of pushed them out of field goal range. But if they end up going for it, so be it. This is a fake field goal. This is a fake field goal. Oh, my God, they kicked it. And it is Nowhere great. close. Yeah, this is not looking great for Coastal right now. And with 56, I don't, I didn't know Central Michigan called a timeout. But with 48, 9 seconds, they have an opportunity almost at the 50 to try to get in the field goal range. And it, it realistically could only take one play to do so. Cole Strong down on the left by himself. They're going to run the ball. Um, that actually ended up being a great move as they get nine yards from Caleb Holliman and they can hurry this up. I gotta say, uh, Jordan Grant's looking vulnerable, man. For the first time this season, we're looking vulnerable. Oh, absolutely. Another handoff I up the middle doesn't get a first that. down. That's a bad play call right there. Doesn't get a first down. Now you have to burn timeout. Now it's third and one. I, I get that you're probably nervous to make Fred put it back through the air after that inter interception, but, you know, that was his. Technical, technically, like his first incompletion, maybe. Yeah. At least I think. Read option gets the first down, which does stop the clock. I know some coaches in this league don't know that. 
Um, we're going to probably get another read option. It looked like it was inside zone up the middle. Devon Celestia for six yards. They are running this ball. They're just letting the clock tick. I think they're trying to push into field goal range to at least add three more and then take it into half. I believe. Oh, yeah, CCU gets ball at half. So that would have been big for them to score there and double up. However, that does not happen. Fred Weasley singles back, back there, going to play action. The right end is back there. He's got Colt Strong, and he's just going to miss it. I got to say, As, Angel Modernado is uh, playing playing very well today. He's, well, he's, he's seen he some missed action the today. Fixed. But, yes, he did do that. But mm -hmm. he is at least making defensive plays where it matters. I mean, that's, all, that's, huh. why, that's why these defensive backs aren't playing wide receiver. I think this is going to be another play action pass out of them, and it's not. The running back's going to take off on the verts. He's going to throw it over the middle of the Elijah guy for 10 yards. Man, that was just an easy tight oh. end slant. First down, time stop. They're going to hurry up. I don't Ten know about four. this one. I wouldn't. Wide open over there on the Elijah guy. He's not going to take it. He's going to take the bounce. easy receiver for Willie Dale. And now you're in field goal range. Now you're looking. See, now he doesn't look tan. I'm so confused by Fred Weasley right now. <laughs> Guys, it's tan gate. I'm not sure if that's Fred Weasley out there, to be completely honest with you. And the field goal is up and good. 17 to nothing going into halftime unless we see the first ever RFCL kick return touchdown. And could it happen in the national championship? I don't think it's going to, but I guess we'll find out. And let's let's be honest here. The game's still in reach, right? You, I mean, you haven't done a great job at stopping the CMU offense, but the game is by far still in reach. This is a good team, good coaches. Like it's going to take a lot for these guys to go down. And we're going to see a great kick return, but he's going to get tackled from behind. That is Patrick Jordan. Who do you want to go talk to first? I think we should probably go talk to Coach the one that asked them what in the world is going on in this game. All right, let's go. <clears throat> Hmm. Coach Gage, Coach go. Twist, how are we feeling after that half? Shitty. Not good. That's Hell. not all. <laughs> I didn't expect much out of that question, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I just you... honestly wanted to see what the emotions were like. Because, I mean, it's, it hasn't looked great. Now, we're seeing... Um... A lot of heavy blitzes out of CMU, right? A lot of heavy blitzes on their defense. And it seems like it's getting a Jordan Grant. Has he just been hit a few more times than what he's used to and having a hard time getting his head back into it? Or what do you think is going on? No, nah, he's just not completing passes. I mean, we're getting – if you go back and watch it, we're anticipating the blitzes. We're calling quick routes, and he's not hitting them, period. Um, every, we've got guys open all over the field. He's not hitting them. We've got guys on defense in positions to have pick sixes, interceptions in the end zone. They're dropping that. You know, our first drive of the game, we went three and out thanks to a drop on second down that would have had us at third and three instead of third and ten. So we just, I mean, we can't catch a damn football and Jordan can't throw it. Uh, Gage, speaking of those drop interceptions, what – are you going to tell your defensive backs to get their heads back in the game and, you know, obviously not let those drops stress them to play horribly? I mean, they haven't played bad, but when you give them extra chances to score nine times out of ten, they're going to take advantage of that. And that's that's all that's happened here. So just tell them to, you know, put some stick them on their gloves or something. I'll end it on this. Uh, that, that fourth down call, um, I thought it was a good call. I thought you had an out route wide open, and Jordan takes him to the right side. Twist, yep. your your play call there, what was the idea going into that? Um, and for a second there, did you think about just kicking it? Yeah, more than a second. <laughs> um, we we talked about that for a couple of uh, a couple of brief moments, but then decided that the field goal wasn't going to win this game for us, and so we quickly decided that we needed to uh, open up, you know, a one-on-one -on -one situation. That was the play call that we decided to go with, and it worked. It was there. Uh, just the execution in this first half has been abysmal, um, almost worse than some Pee Wee teams I've seen. So. Um, we got to figure it out at the quarterback position or we're not going to be able to move the ball at all. I have some ideas on how to beat, you know, the, the pressure that we're seeing, but I can't do that if we're throwing, you know, little duck snorts <clears throat> all over the field. So uh, hopefully we can figure it out and uh, play some football because us coaching staff, uh, we're ready for that. All right, gentlemen, we'll leave you alone to talk to your team. Good luck the rest of the game.
Thanks, sure. guys. Yeah, that mis- our big mistake was that second to last drive. Yeah, nice sneak. Coach Gerald, Coach Watt, and Coach Core, <laughs> how are we feeling after that first half? Of football? I mean, we're feeling great, but you know, we saw we were part of a comeback last week uh, that was bigger than this. So uh, we are not, you know, we're not going to relax. We're going to keep playing the way we've been playing and look to close out this game in the second half. You know, I'm sitting here, and um, I think the biggest thing for me for this national championship is I'm, I'm calling it Tamgate. Um, what happened to Fred Weasley? And did he just have his arm out the window on the bus ride over? I'm calling it Tamgate right now because that is wild. <sighs> I don't think you know. Fred, what did you do? Well, you know, we talked about your quarterback minus sneaking on my team last week. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's those accusations. And, you know, Fred's playing good. Uh, playing better than last week, obviously, making the throws. But uh, Some mistakes. You know, yeah, we made some mistakes. There's stuff to know. clean up. It wasn't a perfect half by any means. I'd, I'd like, say defensively is about as good as it could have gone. And that's yeah. huge props to Lyon. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, Lyon saved us on that, you know, second to last drive that we completely yeah, been messed calling up. The plays. So, yeah, defense has really gotten us in good spots. And the uh, officers doing what they're doing. Nice. Uh, Speaking of Coach Core, uh, what is what is the plan to keep Coastal under wraps in the second half, especially with them getting the ball back to start? Um, just do what we've been doing. It's just it works. So I mean, there's no point, no reason to go away from it. You know, I, I'll I don't know. Sneak, you got anything else? Because I got one more. No, you you're you're good, man. I'm seeing what I'm calling the George Weasley effect. All right, I'm seeing everybody around the league have this. Jordan Grant is experiencing the George Weasley effect currently. Um, at this point, I think Jordan must have gotten sick and George put on his face for some reason. But um, what do you think about Jordan's struggles? Do you think you're just hitting him a lot? Do you think it's in his head that he's going to get hit? Uh, yeah. You know, I'll answer this in court camp too. The pressure that Core's been calling is really, I think, kind of got their offense – you know, questioning what they're doing. They just have not been able to find any answer down the field. Uh, you know, I messed up on the third, third, uh, third and 13. I called the wrong adjustments. That cost us, uh, like, a 20-yard play. So, uh, that one's on me. Other than that, course called a pretty perfect game today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. what, what you're oh, I'll take it. I should probably stop trashing my quarterback every time I get a chance. But um, <laughs> we'll leave you guys now. Uh, good luck the rest of the game. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make this game a little closer. No. I don't know about that. <laughs> but if it happens, it happens. Respect, respect to their team, but uh, we're, we're going for a, a good victory here. Yeah. All right, guys. Good luck. There you go. All right, Sneak. What you think about their answers, man? How you feeling? How you feeling, buddy? I want to say that Coastal will turn around, but I just I think that the ship has sank. To be quite honest, I, I gotta be Just honest. I'd see you winning this game coming in, but CCU gets ball first as like after half. I, I think they got a good chance here, man. Yeah, but with the way Core is calling the plays on defense and with the way Weasley's playing on offense, you know, it's a, they're they're not getting stopped. I mean, they've been stopped one time, and that was really just to hurry up and get downfield and let's lob the ball up, see what happens, kind of deal, you know. But. <laughs> You know, it's it, uh, CMU is not being stuffed at all on offense, and CCU is, and that's a problem. As we, as we sit here and talk, they, let's, it's good to mention as we're going to hand up up the middle to Patrick Jordan. He's going to fumble, but luckily Trey Turner picks up the ball and saves his team, and that's going to be challenged, question mark. Yes, I just spoke out a question mark, and I could care less. I think he's down there. It doesn't matter. They got the ball back. Yeah, um, he's down. But I was going to say, and it's it's important to mention here, that this is Lion Corps' final game for CMU. Even with everything happening, he is out after this season, and Coach Sexman is coming in to take his defensive coordinator spots. And um, what goes on with that? So he's really, really showing out right now, saying, hey, if I ever come back, um, I, should, I deserve a spot. Absolutely. You know, the... the... Even even with all the woes that happened on the, each of these teams, all of these coordinators and coaches are you know worth something. You know they're they're not they're not invaluable. 
as we're going to get another hand up to Patrick Jordan up the middle. This is really going to help uh, Jordan Grain out a lot, as he's going to go for 17 yards. We're going to start seeing the Jordan Grain of old here. We're going to get a hurry up. Um, and I'll be honest with you, 17 is not insurmountable. So if you score a quick here, I mean, I came back down 24 nothing to win. 28 to 24 in like less than a half. So it, this isn't, as we're going to get a designed, it was not a designed run, but Jordan Grant just kind of take off for negative five here. And that's why I think that it is uh, it is insurmountable. Because of these plays right here. They're just, it's nothing good is happening right now. Until I start seeing Jordan Grant throwing dimes up and this team moving downfield and putting up points, I will stand by my uh, by my comment. Yeah, we're going to get a bunch set here. Jefferson on one side, number eight on the other. Those are the only two really tall people on this team. As we're going to go, oh, my God, that's almost a pick. Daniel Johnston, was that the third or the second? I didn't see it. Some Roman I... numeral number going crazy right now this is not looking good and you know what he said it's not insurmountable I'll, I'll hold out hope until the end of the game you know i'm i'm holding up hope because it's the national championship man. who knows i know what you said yeah i i said that wrong i apologize no, um jordan grant 5 to 13 42 yards just won't get it done almost an interception right there stokes single man high trips on the right Dude, Trey Turner is a man. Look at that guy. He looks like Brock Bowers. He's going to back up. He's going to look to throw. He's going to throw out to the right side. Absolutely no one because the corner route was there. He just way underthrew it. This is a very bad game for Jordan Grant to not be playing the way that he should be. Yeah, man, it's the national championship game. This is, this is tough, man. This is real tough. This is a fake punt. I'll lose my mind. For I pray to you. I pray, please, let this be a I fake think punt. It, I think it is a fake punt, but I think they're also... Oh, maybe not. I would have lost my mind, and I would have been happy. I'm not going to lie, because that would have been insane. <laughs> Gage, known for doing fakes for field goals or anything like that. He does them, and half the time they work. Not against me, but half the time they work. 4-2-5 normal out of gauge here. His defense really started to pick it up towards the end of that first half, an interception, and then just allowing three points to end it. A uh, weird little setup here as Colt Strong's coming in motion. Fake handoff to him. Fred Blues is going to just carry, I believe that is Angelo, for eight yards. Or six yards. My apologies. <laughs> Again, same formation. We're probably going to see another... Um, motion on a Colt Strong here, unless nope, they just <clears throat> they just uh, hot routed him. So I don't think he's going to come in motion anymore. This could, in fact, be a pass, but I would bet on it being another QB run, as we are going to see them take time down. Yeah, I think that's a smart decision on CMU. Honestly, you know, limit the times that CCU gets the ball. Uh, Play action pass down. going out to. Ooh. See, now that was questionable. You have the short yardage. Why not run it? The run game has been working terrific for you. Oh my god, Gray. That's his third attempt at an interception. He's one for three at interceptions, man. One for three. Take that to the house, brother, as this is going to be a handoff up the middle, what they should have done the last time. And that'll be a gain of about six for a first down. I see a lot of similarities between Selesker and Lakip, to be honest with you. I'm still losing my mind over the dropped pick six. Two of them in this game, that makes it 14 to 17 right now. Not even 14 to 17, because it stops a scoring drive. 14 to 10. Far is out here living in the past, and I'm living in the present. <laughs> That's what you think. Meanwhile, I'm just two steps ahead and behind at the same time. Don't ask how that happens. Press man here, they're going to back off last second. It's going to be a read option by Fred Weasley off to the right. Number 90 is way too slow and huge, by the way. And he's going to get a, back, a gain of 15. That was a pretty good run from uh, one, of the, one of the Weasley brothers, you know? i got to tell you, I'm afraid every time someone switches the ball. Did you see Fred there? Right before he got tackled, he switched the ball into his right hand. If you're going to do that, because you need to run with the ball on the side of the um, out-of-bounds marker, right? So if you're running to the right, the ball needs to be in your right arm. But for him to switch from his left to his right, 
just as he's getting hit is a terrible idea because then you fumble. Oh, absolutely. But luckily, this football one on one. Luckily, the only fumble that has happened was on Patrick Jordan and Philip Dixon. And, even and they got the ball back. Yeah. Oh, well, and even happened. Even, oh, there's oh, the fumble. Oh, and Coastal got oh, the ball. Oh, what looks like a terrible play from the CCU defense does not haunt them, and they get ball back. Can we talk about uh, the right end of CCU uh, falling hard for the play action? Like, hard for the play action. He literally turned all the way around, and technically it was a block in the back, because that's how hard that guy bit on the play action. Ugh. 17-point lead, not safe here, but you need to come away with points now. You need to have a really quick drive. Two tight ends to the right, drop back to pass. Throw it deep! It's going to be intercepted! Well underthrown! A guy wide open deep for a touchdown! What in the world is going on right now? That was way underthrown, man. He was wide open. It looks like he just lobbed it up. What was that, dude? Oh, can you hear the defeat in my voice? Imagine Gage. Oh, Anyways. I can, I can only imagine. Elijah Guy on motion. Celeste in the back. It's going to be a handoff. The pulling guard has nobody to block. There was nobody for the pulling guard to block for about 15 yards. And that's going to be a 14-yard game. For anybody just tuning in, the reason why we are windowed is because I had just recently moved and my setup is not complete yet. And I am working with one monitor. So please bear with me. Incorrect. After this stream, made fun of him. Anyways, here we go. Uh, Fred Weasley in the backfield again. I can see this being a hand up off the middle. Uh, they're changing play a lot right now. Uh, let's see what happens here. Fred all alone. He's going to read option. Oh, no one. A swallow. Could have been another fumble, but at this point, I don't think it matters. Could have been another fumble, but it would have been picked anyways. Um, and now uh, talking back to the... Uh, to the last interception. Uh, the play call was bad. All right? and, and I've been talking about core. I've been talking core up this whole time. The play call was bad. That corner got absolutely torched on single man coverage. And the safety wasn't even over there. If Jordan Grant throws that ball correctly, we're looking at a 17-7 game. Oh, absolutely. Hand up up the middle of Selesker. He's going to get a gain of about 7. 35. And yes, I know that a lot of you are saying, you know, set up hotkeys, but you know, with two monitors, really didn't need to set up hotkeys. Well, also you had like, it was well past eight p.m. by the time we got this thing up. So. Right, exactly. And there was yeah, we, there were there were some technical difficulties. I didn't really have a lot of time. It was real quick to try to get this thing up as fast as possible because we need to play this game, man. It's a national championship game. A schedule honestly, time. Honestly, to... honestly, I think it's an actual terrific broadcast for the amount of time that we had and. You know, in, just, in such a short span. Correct. All right, we're getting Fred Weasley in the backfield. Selesker on an angle route. That's who he's going to. Wide open first out. Exactly what you didn't need. You need to get CMU off the field now. Yeah, if they put up another touchdown, or I'm even going to say another field goal, I think it's just going to be way too demoralizing. If they put up another touchdown, uh, you'll see half the stadium leave. Um, because that's what football fans do, right? We're sitting yep. up here in the booth. We're going to see people start to get up and leave. And I kind of want to cam for that. I can't see it, but I'll let you know people leave. Don't worry. I'll tell you, audience. I'll tell you. <laughs> Willie Davis on motion. He's going to throw out to Colt Strong. Colt Strong is going to go down to the three. Uh, I wish he would have scored there just because it's me. Other than that, I don't care. Uh, he's down at the three. I'm hearing a lot of rumors going around that it, it's a potential that Coach Core might be going to uh, Montana after this season. Well, let's just see what happens in this game. If he blows a 17-point lead, uh, I don't think we'll go anywhere. Anyway, it's Fred Weasley <laughs> back with Slesker alone in the backfield. Um, the defense is really trying to change it up here, trying to get to him. Fred Weasley in the back, throwing it easy to Elijah Guy for a touchdown. And it is 24 to nothing. You know, I didn't expect to do this. Um, but did you prepare... Any blowout material. 
Uh, I mean, normally when we, when we do blowout material, it's mostly just things that me and you come up with on a whim. So, I mean, might as well continue to do oh, that. Oh, boy. But <laughs> I, mean, I don't plenty, think there's plenty, thing, there's plenty of things that we could talk about once we, once we get to that point. Yeah, I'm not sure how much I want to talk, though. You know, the coach's corner needs us. All the content for the offseason. Anyways, the kick return is actually a really good one. Holy, no, oh my God. Out to the 31. Oh my goodness. 40 played in 26 plays. 240 total yards and 77 total yards. Dude, this is absolute dominance by one side. And what are we seeing here? Death chart in the biggest game of his We're career. seeing Jordan Grant get benched in the national championship in his final game at Coastal. What is going on on that sideline? Maybe, listen to me, maybe they thought that the game's over. We'll give our backup a chance because he'll be here next season. He's going to compete with the four-star we have coming in. Maybe we give him a chance to show what he has in the biggest moment. Um, I think it's the wrong call. This is Jordan Grant's final college game forever. Uh, so I think you give it to him. But the hand up up the middle, and that's going to be a broken tackle by Slade Edenfield. That is the first time today I've called his name. It's because that is his first rushing attempt of the game, Mars. Exactly. I'm <laughs> glad you read my mind there. As Trey Turner is in motion, another handoff to the same guy. Some reason, just breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage, hand of five. Uh, I want to see Coastal do what Florida Atlantic did and hand the ball off to their tight end for 12 yards. I, I just I don't see that happening. Trey Turner is quick, man. The same play three times in a row. Big truck. If he would have trucked that guy over, he would have been gone. Did you see the receiver standing there, though? Like he didn't know what happened? I didn't know I was supposed to block. <laughs> well, what do you mean I'm supposed to block? I only catch passes. <clears throat> Pistol formation. Going to get out of what they were just in. Clarence Jefferson off to the left. Julius Tate off to the right. Uh... Edenfield in the backfield. He's going to throw it deep to absolutely no one out of bounds. And you know what? That was just for his offensive line, backup offensive lineman to catch it on the outside. Uh, I, I just don't agree with the call to bench Jordan Grant. Um, and I don't know about you, but I do see people starting to lean just to <laughs> update my viewers and listeners over the radio or whatever I'm streaming to right now as I'm live and in person at this game. Um, I'm starting to see people leave, trickle out, and a lot of people are wearing Dr Jordan Grant jerseys. As yeah. I forgot this kid's name in the backfield, uh, nameless, who will never play again for his entire career. In the back, he's gonna yes. throw a dart he, to Julius. Too. He threw a completion before Jordan Grant did. Ricchetti, Rick, Rick, Ricciatelli, Ricciatelli. Reach the Back to pass. No one's going to get there. He's going to... Dude. Where was know. that throw to? So, Wiley Coyote. And I want to tell you what. This is how I know he's a backup. He dropped back 10 steps while he was... Dude. He dropped back. It was like playing Madden as a kid and just dropping back forever and attempting to pass the ball thinking it would go somewhere. It doesn't happen. So, now we're sitting here. And... We're, and you know, I see on the sideline, Coach Gerald, Werald, one might say, is having a laugh right now at CCU's expense, and I don't appreciate that. I need some touchdowns scored right now. Hand up up the middle to Edenfield, and Patrick Jordan, that's Patrick Jordan, thank God. I mean, I agree, but I just don't see it happening, to be quite honest with you. Let's, let's see what the reactions are for uh, this coastal sideline. Let me tell you what, I said it in pregame, I said it here. The George Weasley effect is real, man. Everybody has it at least once in the season, and and Jordan Grant's getting it now. Oh, they got ball back. No, no they flip sides. My bad, guys. As the ball's going to go over the middle to absolutely no one. Dylan Marshall's going to get the tackle for just being in the vicinity because that's how college football works. We didn't know. So, and, uh, Jordan, no, Grant, okay. Jordan Grant was starting to – complete some passes by and what i meant by the backup completing a pass before jordan grant did was comparing the two uh jordan grant did not complete a pass until he was 0 for 3 awesome 
Fun fact, I don't think this is a young quarterback. I think this is a senior as well. He, I think he's leaving. But anyways, pass over the middle should have been intercepted, and we're going to get a turnover on down. Central Michigan has ball back. We're looking at the shutout. The second ever shutout by CMU, and the second ever shutout by CMU. And, oh, my, my God. Second ever shutout by CMU and Coach Gore. And it's in the national championship. Probably the worst place to ever have a shutout. These are the two best teams. Like, you guys are supposed to be competing back and forth. And this is just awful on CCU, to be honest. Like, I was not expecting this at all. Yeah, neither was I, man. Like, coming in this game, I expected a real close game with CMU to take it in a close one. Not like this, though. Um, Fred Weasley, back on his own, about to pass this ball. Hot routing people. Uh, it's going to be a hand up up the middle to Selesker, actually, for three yards. And you know what? The CMU guys are good guys, right? They'll probably run this ball out, probably try some new things, get it to the end of the game. Not on this drive. I don't think they're going to be able to do it here, but that's what they're trying to just waste I mean, clock. It's possible, it's possible. Especially if you just start, uh, in, you know, kind of incorporating some play styles from myself or Coach Trigger, uh, who like to chew the clock. Uh, you can definitely end this game by chewing chewing the clock. Yeah, instead of pressing chew clock, you just let it chew, chew, mm -hmm. chew. Anyways, Colt Strong on a motion down to the bottom. It won't do anything as this is going to be another QB run by Fred Weasley. And never mind, Colt Strong get the ball. No, no, that messed up Colt Strong's stats. And I'm upset by it. Negative three. It really, yards it, it really didn't because it counted as rushing yards. And Yeah, but now he's anybody... negative Anybody in the rushing yard category is going to be all running backs or quarterbacks. All right, Hunt, uh, that was very quick. I didn't even realize it was fourth down. That's how quick it was. Like, all right, they get the ball back with four minutes and 50 seconds remaining. What can they do with it? As the back of is still in. No more Jordan Grant doesn't look like he's coming back for the rest of the game. And see, I'd give him another shot. Let's see what he can do in this fourth quarter. You know, pull some dignity together. Yeah, you got to, man. Come out. I mean, you're still playing for something, right? You're playing for pride at this point. Put exactly. Jordan back in. Like, put, put him back in. There we go. You're playing for dignity. You're playing. This is the end of your season. You need a touchdown. You can't go out like this. Not a shutout. In the national championship game. And by the way, CMU just gave up, what, 32 points last week in the semis? So yep. you cannot go out with a shutout right here. Single man. Jordan Grant back to pass already. He's going to find oh a guy wide open. He's at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. Oh, oh he didn't get to the 10. Straight. I've always wanted to do that. I was 67 yards. I was getting ready to. Quote Coach Gage himself and say, Mama, there goes that man. And you know what? That, that's that been there all game. Jordan Grant's just had to get it there. That corner has been burnt so many times in this game alone. As Jordan Grant in back to pass has oh, a guy yeah. wide open. Oh, my God. The corner was wide oh. open and he went off to run. This has been all game, man. Like, they're beating the coverage. It's not like the, de the defense is playing well. Don't get me wrong. But the defensive line is really coming through for them. Play action pass, back to pass, given it to Patrick Jordan. He's going to break a tackle, but go down negative one yards. Awesome. I've always wanted to do that. He's at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 10, and he ruined it. It doesn't, it doesn't right. happen very often when we're right. in the booth, honestly. Because I feel like all of our games have either been just very slow paced or just extremely close but low scoring. Oh, dude, I wanted that so bad. Um, anyways... We're going to get trips out to the left single man in the backfield. It's going to be Taylor, who I believe is the third string running back or fullback. Drop back to pass. Jordan Grant throwing to his right. He's got his guy. He's going to go down for a gain of five, fourth and five. And get this freaking touchdown, man. Jordan Grant has had people open all game. Get this touchdown. See, but here's the thing, though. You can't really bank on it. So if he misses again, it's done. Oh my word. I would go to CMU scams. Go to CMU scams. We're getting an instant already, replay. This is going to be here. 
This is going to be here, right here. That slight was open. I would not have, dude, you're not going to get the ball back, probably. Go for the touchdown. You're not going to get the ball back. But see, I would have at least put three up, just so you know that you definitely did not get shut out in the national championship. Oh, no. No, I'm going to dice. The, especially with the struggles and woes that Jordan Grant has been having today. It's, Correct. I, I, I would have taken the points, just so that I had that clarification that CMU did not shut me out in this in the national championship. All way out of bounds by Fred Weasley. They are still throwing the ball. They tried to throw it deep right there. Ladies and gentlemen, you're getting two different sides of the coin here with these broadcasters. These are two head coaches in this league telling you two very different things that they would do. This is the diversity here in this league. We don't all think the same, um, but that's fine. As Fred Weasley takes it off to the left, and he's got a lane, he's going to slide. You don't see that a lot. Fred likes to truck people over, but he's going to slide right there for against that. I feel like a lot of the quarterbacks that take off and run like to truck. Like, they just have no care in the world. Uh, unless unless, I, unless you're uh, Kepler, who gets hurt every time. Yeah. Ooh, we got some was hate. That, was, that too, was, that, was, that, was that too soon, USM? No. It's never too soon to make fun of USM. <laughs> um, we got some haters out there uh, heckling Jordan Grant and Coach Gage right now. But you know what? They're at the championship game, and you're watching. So I don't know how that makes you feel, but it shouldn't make you feel good. Uh, Fred Weasley's going to take the ball out to the right. He's going to get hit zero yards. And see, here's where I re I remember. I don't know if J uh, Coach Gerald is going to do it. But I do recall that when he had a blowout the last time, that he said if the other team decides that they're going to call a timeout when there's no possibility of them, you know, coming back, he was going to, you know, run the score up or go for it when it wasn't needed. Now, obviously, he did not do that on this time, but I do recall Coach Larry saying that. I mean, I've said that and thrown Hail Marys on people who didn't really respect that. But uh, anyways, the ball is going to sail way out of bounds on that corner route. I do say that a lot. If you call a timeout, and there's zero chance of you coming back, I'm going to score on you again. I don't. I'm going to throw bombs. I'm going to score on you. I've proved it multiple times this season. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a wheel route there by the running back. He won't be open. Jordan Grant's going to find Julius Tate over the middle for eight yards. Hurry up offense here. We're going to try to get the touchdown. We're going to try to keep this game going. I mean, it's over, but we're going to try to keep it going. A little... Single high has been working all game, and I don't know how. Um, I, I'm not going to say it's been working. He's had people open, but there's D line that have been insane. Like, look at that. Oh. Wide open. And that's been all game. He's had people open, but he just can't get it to him because that defensive line is insane. If these or offensive linemen the hold up. He decides to run when he shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. If these offensive linemen hold up just a little bit, we're looking at a very different game with how this defense is playing. As we're going to get a bunch formation here. Pass Jordan in the backfield by himself. Jordan Grant back to pass. Looking, looking. Sacks by the right end. And like I said, this defensive line came to absolutely play. And nobody was open that time. Or if they were, he didn't throw it. So I'd love to see an instant replay. Uh, we're going to get one. We're going to see people wide open. Look at that zig route. I would have thrown that. I a little hook right there was open for a second. Nothing's open right there when he started to take off. But the middle of the field was for him to run. So obviously he did none of that. Guys, with this game running out, uh, we might see Fred try to score. Larry does like to do so. We're going to see an all-out blitz here, negative uh, three. With this game running out, uh, assistant coaches are brand new to this league. We can sign assistant coaches. You'll be like special teams coach. You'll be um, wide receiver coach, stuff like that. Help us out. Help recruit. Um, I, don't, I don't think you're going to be there for games, but you can help recruit, help be there, and help you get experience to come through and be a uh, coordinator. Uh, coordinator extensions go through starting tomorrow. I know there's already been talk. That ball sails way out of bounds. I know there's already been talk about uh, the coordinators and who's going where, right? We don't know who's going where. I know where my guys are going, obviously. But tomorrow, extensions come through. Sneakers knows exactly what his guys are doing. Um, but if you have been hired... I haven't, I haven't uh, got confirmation from the other. Uh, well, if you have been hired or you're interested in interviewing, 
stick around because, like I said, extensions go out tomorrow. Tomorrow's the end of the season completely, so we're going to start interviewing a lot more. I don't think there's any openings, actually. Um, I think everyone is hired. Uh, and you know what? You know what I love about the uh, uh, coordinators we have this There's an opening for uh, uh, Montana. No, uh, Montana, we, we still has, going Montana still doesn't have a D.C. And we know who's going there. Um, no <laughs> Uh, this is a puck block coming out. He's not going to block it. The ball's going to go into the end zone because that's who it goes. No, we have no idea who's going there. I'm joking. Um, anyway, CCU gets the ball back. Let's see if they can score. But I got to say about these coordinators in this league, right? Especially you're seeing some great coordinators out there right now. Um, the coordinators in this league very into this, right? They don't sit there and they watch the NBA draft. They don't sit there and watch something while they're coaching. They're very into it. They pay attention. They have their cameras on half the time. Very into it. That's what we need, people. We need people in this league that want to be a part of it, that want to have passion about it as much as we do. So if you're interested, uh, interviews should be going out tomorrow. And I think there's another, I think there's a spot open as Nick just said, so we'll figure it out as Jordan Grant is going to throw that ball away. Other than that, is there any other announcements that have been out the past few days that we should go over? I don't think so. Oh, I'm sorry, what was that? Sorry. Are there any other announcements that have gone out the past few days that we should go over? Um, And the possibility of uh, some of these head coaches becoming uh, athletic directors. Uh, so there's potential. Has that been announced? Uh, well, I mean, it's been kind of talked about. That's fair. Play action pass over the middle for a gain of nine by Clarence Jefferson. Coming alive. Hey, you can talk about that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's obviously been been talked about a little bit, you know, because obviously uh, Nismo has... Oh, my God. Patrick oh Jordan my. broke one. Nice. That's what they needed all game. I have to mute. This guy and his phone calls. Ridiculous. Any who's... Um, not really much to talk about in this game as of right now, because you know. It's... Sorry about that. I'm back. What is that name? Nawach Kinku. I don't know how to say that name. Anyways, Patrick Jordan for nine yards. <laughs> not much. Like, about? The the guy who got the tackle there earlier. It was like some wild man. Um. Anyways, a little play action. Going to drop back to pass. He's going to throw it. It's going to be. Oh, oh, my God. I thought that was completed. It was not Nubongu, by the way. It had a K in it and a bunch of other stuff. And I know how to, no, I had a K at the end. So, I, I don't know what it was. Hmm. Um, and if you – earlier, by the way, if you feel like I called you out and you're in here, it's probably because I did. Um, but anyways, we're seeing Jordan Grant completely cold. And that's not good for this team right now, especially when you're trying to – he's a wide-open receiver on the right-hand side. Can he get it there? He doesn't need and to. And there goes the shutout. Coastal puts up points on the board. Dignity saved. Look, man, we've seen it, right? These corners can't keep up with these receivers. They can't. I mean, we saw it last time they played, and we're seeing it now. These corners can't keep up with these receivers. But this defensive line out of CMU is outrageously good. They ran this game, man. It was the, this whole game went through that defensive line. Oh, absolutely. As you can see right here. Holy crap, man. This defensive line is so good. It's insane. And they're just going to be better starting next season. So we're going to get an onside kick, which we all know this can happen. No, doesn't happen. Tyler Carter standing right there looking at you like, really, man? Really? Yeah, I thought. <laughs> uh, are we just going to see kneel downs? Uh, if we start seeing kneel downs, we'll just hop in and talk to the coaches. Actually, I don't want to do that. It's the national championship game. Let's wait. We're going to wait until the game's over. In the meantime, field goal block, taking a knee. Dude, at the end of the day, these teams were the best in the league, right? They got to the national championship. You don't get there by accident. So, at the end of the day, what a game. What a season. Congratulations, Sneak, on your season with Marshall. Uh, big things come with you with Upper Iowa. Congratulations to the league for having an amazing first season in this, like, this whole thing that we didn't know what this was going to be, to be honest with you. We all got hired to be head coaches. We all got hired to be coordinators, whatever it is. Congratulations to everyone who's participated. What a season. Season two is just around the corner. Um, don't know if they've released the date we're thinking about starting again, so I won't. But congratulations to everyone involved. What a season.
Who do you want to go to first? The national champion? No, we should go to the losers first. Yeah. Yeah, let's go to the losers. Let's go to Scopes. Okay, we're already on them. Um, they helped Alabama beat right. Texas, and then you show those four plays. Yep. Um, yeah, that would be pretty cool. We'll, we'll get there. Coach Gage, Coach Twist. Very disappointing loss today. Um, is there anything that you guys learned from playing in this game that you can kind of bring over to next season when the, the season restarts? Yeah, I'd say, you know, you can have the greatest scheme in the world um, and ultimately the best quarterback in the, the league. And at the end of the day, it could all not mean shit. So that's my takeaways. I will say that, you know, we're sitting here, uh, finally got a touchdown towards the end of the game. But we saw that a lot today where you're, the corners just could not keep up with your receivers. The defensive line of CMU was playing absolutely out of their minds. Like, they showed up today. But your receivers beat the corners almost every play. So finally we get a touchdown. Just how disappointed are you that Jordan Grant just couldn't get it done today? It's his final game ever as a college athlete, and he showed up like that. Yeah, me and Twist were talking about that. And it's like, you know, this is that 1% game this is you know jordan's played bad at times during the season but never for a full what was that four and three quarters you know like it's it's been or three and three quarters it's been he's had a bad drive or he'd start a game slow or something like that and then he'd always find his way well he never found his way and then dropped interception leads to them scoring points and then we start the second half with you know i don't even know what that was um where we called a called a halfback dive and he just dummied out, didn't hand it, and tried to throw it to nobody. Everybody was blocking. Um, I don't know. I mean, like we said, this is that one percent game that we couldn't have happened, and it happened. So, Nick, you got anything else? Um, no, not really. All right. I just want to say congratulations on the season, guys. I know that one hurts. I know that one stings. You made it. Um, to the championship game, which, you know, six other teams can't say. So you made it here. Um, congratulations. Twist was a great pickup for an OC. I think he called a great game going into this. Um, and we'll see you guys next season. Appreciate it. Gentlemen, congratulations as being the first ever RFCL national champions. Now, how do you feel? How does the team feel? And um, is the field covered in confetti? I can't see because of the colorful right now. It's, yeah, it's, it's color. It's color. We're celebrating. It's a great. Uh, we played great. Uh, you know, second half we were able to you know play conservative. Just really no, don't take any risks. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially when we opened the second half. Uh, I believe with the fumble that was uh, not great. But uh, yeah, both coordinators called great games. Um, uh, you know, there wasn't really much else that you could say went wrong today for us. Nick, um, I'll go again. There's, 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 <laughs> there's really nothing really to say because you know, obviously, there was there was really nothing going wrong for you guys on that field today. To be quite <laughs> honest with you, yeah. Uh, quarterback came out, started hot. He, I mean, he had a couple of mistakes, but I mean, overall, played fantastic. Second half, we just were able to run the ball, bleed some clock, you know, try to get a first down or two. It didn't really work, but we bled enough time to seal the victory. Coach Gerald, um, great game, great play calls by your coordinators, all around great game. How did you guys win coming into this? Um, excited to be correct, also excited to be wrong. Um, now, when we get to it, the, that offense over at CCU is high powered. It's probably the best quarterback in this league. Y'all shut him down. You and Core shut him down. But also, it was the defensive line. What did you feed those guys coming into this? Because those corners got beat. And no one can tell me they didn't. Those corners got beat most of the game. But that defensive line was absolutely insane today. Sacked him nonstop, made him uncomfortable. What did you even give them? How did that happen? You know, throughout, you know, we, we uh, had a couple, you know, game plans throughout the week. Uh, and be honest, 
Uh, the only person I talked to before the game was Wad. You know, Cord did his own thing. I let him do it. Um, I'm more of an offensive minded guy. So, you know, I'll give the defense to him. And he dialed up some new formations for us tonight, and they worked to perfection. So I will let him answer this as well. Uh, yeah, that's all him. Yeah, I mean, I, okay, we changed, we ran 3 3 5 like all year. But I knew they liked to run the ball. So I changed to a very aggressive blitz today. And I can't, I mean, it, it worked to perfection. And I've been, uh, I know Gerald's been waiting his whole life to hear this question. Coach Gerald, now that you're national champion, what are you going to do next? Edit some more NFL files for a good iron. He was supposed to <laughs> go to Disneyland, but he didn't. So that's all I got. <laughs> Sneak, you got anything else for these guys, or can we let them celebrate? Uh, nope. We're just gonna let, we're gonna let you guys celebrate. Congratulations, you guys deserved it. You guys played well. Um, and yeah, let's leave it at that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, good sir. Yep. All right, pars. That officially ends. Yeah, man, it's been a great season. Like I season one. one. Congratulations, all involved. Um, I got nothing else for him, Snake. What do you got? I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty set on everything else. You know, with this great, great season, great first outing for a season. Honestly, uh, I was not expecting it to to end this this great. To be honest, um, really excited for season two, and I will uh, see you in the booth next time we get the chance, brother. Yes, sir. All right, everybody, have a good off season.